Good morning and welcome to the house of the Lord. Let us quieten down our spirits before we hear the call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord and sing God's praise. Make known God's deeds among the people. Seek the Lord and trust God's strength. Proclaim God's wonderful works far and wide. Let those who seek the Lord rejoice. Give thanks to the Lord and sing God's praise. Make known God's deeds among the people. Let us rise and let us sing with Bernard this morning. Over the mountains 
and the seas Your river runs with love for me And I will open up my heart And let the healer set me free I'm happy to be in the truth And I will daily lift my hands For I will always sing Oh, when your love came down Over the mountains and the seas Your river runs with love for me And I will open up my heart And let the healer set me free I'm happy to be in the truth And I will daily lift my hands For I'll always sing Oh, when your love came down Happy to be in the truth, and I will daily lift my hands, for I'll always sing. Let us join our hearts together for a time of prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we give thanks to you that indeed you are gracious to us. Even though we have wandered away in our thoughts, words and deeds, and yet your steadfast love never forsakes us. We want to come this morning and recall your wonderful deeds in our lives. And we lift up our heads to seek you. Particularly this morning, we pray for our nation in this time of transition. Soften the hearts of the members of our new parliament that they may listen to one another with respect, express their thoughts with humble clarity and always seek the good in each other as they strive to form a more perfect union. We want to pray 
that those who have been chosen to carry the burden of office will be endowed by you with wisdom to know what is right and just and be strengthened to always work for the common good. For those who have lost, we pray that they may be consoled and that their hearts may be filled with peace to persevere in serving the people of our nation in new ways. Lord, we are mindful that in this season of the pandemic, there are still issues in the community where people are not looking out for each other. We pray that, Lord, you will saturate our hearts to want to see Singapore strengthened together. As we move toward our National Day, we want to come together as united nation to come and see how we may partner each other that we can come out of the doldrums of economic depression and see better improvement in the lives of different people in our community. Lord, we want to pray particularly also that God, as we move toward our Daring Faith campaign, that God, you will create the excitement within our hearts, a longing to grow and stretch more to know your strength, your power, your love beyond what we have experienced up to this time. We believe that by your spirit, we may be re-energized, we may be refocused on what is best and important in this part of Singapore. We want to dream dreams, we want to see visions. And so Lord, lead us and bind us together we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning's scripture reading is taken from Romans 8, 26-39. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, this he also called. Whom he called, this he also justified. And whom he justified, this he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter, Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God 
which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, church. There was a story of a monastery in Portugal built high up on a 3,000 feet cliff. It is only accessible only by a terrible ride in the basket. And the basket is pulled up by one single, with one single rope by several strong men, working very hard, perspiring under the strain of the fully loaded basket. One American tourist who visited the site got nervous halfway up the cliff when he noticed that the rope was old and worn out. Hoping to be able to reassure himself, he asked, How often do you guys change the rope? The monk in charge replied, Whenever it breaks. Wow. Have you ever had this kind of feeling? Especially in a time like this, we become nervous and anxious when we hear the increasing infections going around us. We are careful and we take precautions, all kinds of precautions. While I, for me, while I admire uh, the beautiful sceneries of other countries, I also see that these countries face disasters of flood, earthquake, political unrest, demonstration, etc. And I got the feeling that it is an insecure world we are living in. As Christians, we too have to sail through our unsettling feelings of uncertainty, guilt, facing our own doubts, pain, and our own struggles. This morning's passage from Romans chapter 8, verses 26 to 39, helps us to understand that our security is in Christ. It is not found within ourselves, nor is it found in the place we go to or live in, nor in the circumstances we are in or our ability. Our security and sufficiency is found in Christ and Christ alone. Each of us will have to respond and decide how we want to lay hold of this security. The Mount Morgan Gold Mine in Queensland, Australia, is one of the richest, is said to be one of the richest in the world. For many years, though, the landowners live in poverty on that mountain. Even though there is a great amount of wealth beneath their feet all the time, which they, are, they were not aware of. Many Christians live in a similar situation. We live through our spiritual life, doubting if God will punish us or reject us one day, unaware of the vast riches God has promised us, and therefore we do not claim them or lay hold of them as we should. What do we mean when we say that we are secure in Christ? To be secure is to know and have the confidence that we are firmly rooted and steady in our relationship with God without the doubt that God has totally accepted us and loved us. To be secure in Christ means secured in our weakness. Romans chapter 8 verse 26 to 27 begins by begin by saying, in the same way. In what way is it the same? To be able to understand that, we take a look at Romans chapter 8, verses 18 to 25, and we will see this follow, this, this, this thing. All creation is suffering and subjected to deterioration and corruption. Creation is anxiously looking to be set free, to be restored through God's final salvation. And it is the hope that they are waiting for. In the light of this struggle of all creation, Paul wrote in Romans 8.23, Not only this, but we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoptions as sons, and redemp the redemption of our body. We are not perfect. Sin has sabotaged the image of perfection 
the perfect image of God in us. As we seek to live the Christian life, if we are honest, we struggle to fully obey God, to walk fully and completely in God's light and power. Paul said in, that in our weakness, we are unable, we don't have the ability to ask correctly or even know what we should pray at a given time. It is really a comfort to know that the Spirit knows that even when we do not know how to pray, be it in our confusion or our loss uh, or, or being lost in our concerns and pain, which is hard to even put into words. The beautiful thing is that the Spirit could take a groaning, a tear and aching hearts and know exactly what it represents in our life and make it into a prayer to God, the Father for us. Sometimes in our struggle and in our helplessness, like what Paul wrote in Romans chapter 7, verse 15, that I, re I don't really understand myself, he said, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. How many of us felt exactly like that? We feel helpless and powerless. Our best after effort oftentimes is short-lived. We need the Holy Spirit to enable us, to help us. The great thing is that God never condemns us in our journey of change and growth. He urges us on day after day, time after time. We only need to respond to Him as He speaks and prompts us. On our journey to heaven, we try, we desire, we give, we, he, we never give up because why? God never gives up on us in this journey. It is not a permission or a license to think that we can remain in our state of no change, no transformation. We rejoice that God's grace is found in our weakness. The Spirit of God ushers us in the midst of all this weakness and struggle he ushers us into an intimate relationship with the Father. In securing us in our weakness, He prays for us. He never let go of us. Even when we fail and messed up, He lovingly come alongside us. We are secured by Christ in our weakness. Secondly, to be secured in Christ is to be secured in our circumstances. Romans 8.28 is one of the popular verse that we many of us quote. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good. It does not mean that when we live carelessly and make reckless decisions, God is committed to clean up our mess we create and, and release us from the consequence of our actions. That he let us take responsibility for our own behavior and decision. God's work in our life goes beyond the crisis we face. The good that He has in mind has a greater purpose that affects eternity and the eternal value that He wants us to have rather than what happens right now in the present situation. Oftentimes, God allows us to go through difficult situations to mold our character, to get us to reevaluate our views and our values that we are holding on to. He let us experience similar uh, pain or experience as, so as to help us grow and learn lessons that we have not learned. Verse 28 says, For we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. Our willingness to love God and to submit to His purpose for life is important because He works all things for good. Are we going through the same thing again and again? Maybe it will be stop. It will be good to stop and ask God, 
What are you saying to me, God? Open my eyes to what you are saying and give me the humility to learn and the understanding to learn and to grow. Verse 29, those whom he foreknew, he also predestined. In our understanding of the Bible as a whole, we know from God's standpoint of seeing time, he saw the past, the now, and the future. And he knows who will respond to him and who will not. This foreknowledge of God does not take away the necessity or the need for human responsibility. It is our responsibility to respond to the good news, to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. On the other hand, all that we, our actions, our human will, our decision, decision, will not be able to cancel out the power and the control, the influence of God to fulfill His purpose in our life. What does that practically mean for us in this passage? Notice that predestination has to do with us becoming like Jesus. It does not talk here about salvation. See verse 29 again. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his Son. So the idea here is that as Christian, we cannot be both up Christian. Something very profound is found in the will of God that every one of us must travel the journey of change or transformation. It does not happen automatically. God wants us to take responsibility to work towards being like Jesus. And He will release His power for you and I to become more and more like Christ. One without the other is not how God works. God has predestined us to be like Jesus. So we need responsibility and we need Him to release His power. Another way of looking at our responsibility and predestination here is this. If I invite you for dinner in my house and decided that I will serve pop chop as a main course, what I am going to serve does not disrupt or infringe on your rights to accept and decline the, the invitation for dinner. But it does exclude you. you from choosing to have turkey or satay for the main course. The invitation is for you to accept or decline. That's where you exercise your will and responsibility. But the outcome of that dinner, of that makan session, is that I have already predestined it. I have already predetermined it. Stuart Briscoe said it very well. The call of God to respond to faith and repentance to the gospel brings the human will into the center stage. But the divine will has already determined what the final result will be. It means this, that it requires our human will to respond to God and the gospel, to repent and to have faith in Christ. That is central. But the divine will of us after we become a Christian is already determined by God and is final of what it will become. What after you receive Christ, what will you become? So when we accept God's invitation to salvation, we are predestined to be like Christ. You may not have the desire right now. You may veer off from the path of God right now. But God, in His power and influence, will pursue you with His love until you come back to Him and learn to be like Jesus. You will notice in, in your Christian life, why every time you read the Bible or, or at times when you listen to a sermon or singing a song or a hymn, there is a conviction that sometimes comes in and the nudge of God in our hearts. For us to feel good? No. It is for us, for God to shape us to become more like Jesus. 
Nothing you are experiencing right now will be able to stop God's plan and purpose to be done in your life. He is still sovereign and to bring His purpose into your life and mind. You may miss out the joys, some of the great joy and blessings in some ways, but you may mess up right now, but I tell you seriously that God never, never, never is going to give up on you. He will somehow turn the table around and pursue you till you respond to Him. Verse 30 says this, And this whom He predestined, which is predestined to take the character of Christ's likeness, He also called. And this whom He called, which He invites and summoned, He also justified, make right in forgiveness and mercy. And this whom He justified, He also glorifies. God's work goes all the way to the end. For those of us who are now here on earth, from God's vintage point of view, He saw your past and looks into eternity and the salvation that Christ has secured for us. And as He looks at you right now, He sees that you are righteous, complete, and are made whole through what Christ has done in the past and what you will, be, you will become when He comes again. Even though we are groaning and feel a deep sense of inadequacy and struggle with sinful tendency, we can rejoice confidently that God is at work to orchestrate all events in our life for our good. So, to be secured in Christ is to know that in our weakness, God do not reject us, but continue to strengthen us and help us. It also means that in all our situations, life situations and journey, God is working out events in our life to mold us and shape us into the glorious image of our Lord Jesus Christ in our character, in our attitude and in our thinking. Finally, we are made secure in the love of God. In all our weakness and limitation in all of life situation, Paul declared that you and I overwhelmingly conquer through Christ who loved us. The idea here is that only through Christ's love and our dependence on Him, we overwhelmingly conquer. Not just able to barely overcome, but we are more than overcomers. We can, in Christ, more than conquer our fears, more than conquer our sins and trusting in Jesus, the stronghold in our life can be thoroughly broken. And we can fully enjoy the life of freedom and the joy that the Lord wants to give us. This is, there is practically no forces on earth that is real or psychological, spiritual or human. Life's great fear with all its pain in life or death. The challenges of ages past and what is to come. Nothing in the realm of nature can separate us from the love of God, the God who loves us dearly. However, there is one thing that is not mentioned. You. You and I can willfully walk away from Jesus, but Jesus will not walk away from you. There is a common quote that says, if God feels far away, guess who move? One thing for sure is that God will never walk out of you if you choose to continue to follow Him and seek after Him. The conclusion is this. God is for us. The challenge and the comfort that Paul helps us to see is that God is for us. He has he had never planned evil against us. No matter how much we we struggle with our weaknesses and sin, God is for us. He does not condone our sin, yes, but he is not against us. He wants to set you and I free. He wants to pull you out of the chains that bind. 
the comments that leech in your mind, the criticism that has, you have been rehearsing in your mind, that keep you awake in the night. He wants you to enjoy true freedom of His love. He is and will never be against you as you continue to seek after Him. This is the comfort in Romans 8.32. He will he who did not spare his own son, but deliver him over for us all. How will he not with him freely give us all things? The first piece of evidence is that he gave his beloved son's life in exchange for your life and mine. If he has given the most precious thing, how will he not release the resources, the enabling, the empowering to allow you and me to become more than conquerors as he has promised? It is up to us to take the challenge to cooperate with God so that we can become what God wants us to be. In our life, are we struggling with a bondage and you feel weak and helpless and are unable to overcome God is with you and he and he wants you to know that despite your weakness you are secured in Christ are you going through a wilderness experiencing something a similar incidence again and again with different contexts different people different situation but similar situation that you are very frustrated with. God wants you to break out of it. And God wants to be able to help you break out of it. Are you willing to seek after the Lord and ask the Lord, Lord, what is it that you want to teach me, to help me to learn? Are you willing to listen to the Lord and humble yourself and come before the Lord to ask Him to search? Like the psalmist says, search me and know me. Lead me in the everlasting way. Are you feeling and asking God if He really loved you and cared for you? God is saying to you, I love you with an everlasting love and I will never, never leave you or forsake you. Will you come into His presence and enjoy and, and grow in an intimate relationship with Him? If you are struggling with a bondage, you're going through a cyclical, a, a wilderness experience. If you are asking God if you really, He really loved you, I want you to just open up your hands and ask the Lord to help you, to give you victory because He promised that you and I are overwhelmingly conquerors. We will overwhelmingly conquer. You and I are more than conquerors in another version. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, some of us are struggling with a bondage, a tendency, a sin. And Lord, we feel so weak and unable to get out of it. We thank you for your assurance that in Christ, we are secure in our weakness. That we are in a process of change. We are in a process of transformation. We ask that, Lord, you break that bondage in our lives so that, Lord, those of us who are going through it will be able to see victory. Father, I pray for those who are going, into, going through a wilderness experience uh, these days. Lord, that you come, Lord, and you break, help them to break out of it. That you bring them to a place, Lord, where they will find refreshing, they will find freedom, they will find the joy of the Lord in their lives. Lord, help them to, to learn what is it that you are opening their eyes to see uh, in their lives. I commit them into your hands. Father, those that are going through a struggle of, of, ask, of doubt whether you truly love them. Father, I ask that, Lord, you truly show to them that there is nothing on earth or in heaven that will be able to separate them from your love. I ask, Lord, that you continue to assure them that this week will be a great week, Lord, of falling in love with you over and over again. We commit ourselves before you, Lord. We, are, we thank you for 
being secure in you, in our weakness, being secure in you, in our circumstances, in your love. We thank you that you are for us and nothing will come against us. We thank you for your enabling and your strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming along with us every Sunday morning. We appreciate your attendance in this online worship service. And before we offer our tithes and offerings, will you join me in a prayer? God of all that is in the world, we want to pray that our hearts may never fail to know that you are the great provider, Jehovah Jireh, that meets our every need. And so in coming like this, we want to exercise faith in this giving this morning. As you move us, we pray that we will give in obedience to you. Receive our thanksgiving and our praise in this small gift. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, you may take your time now to give to the Lord in a manner that is easy for you. Well, we have provided many different methods where you can offer this to the Lord. And so take your time now to give to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we are not yet fully in office. Our admin staff only comes in uh, twice a week. But if you should need to talk to us or ask about things, you can always write to us at admin at ymm, uh, We would like also to announce that uh, the next weekend, we will be meeting together for Holy Communion. So brothers and sisters, uh, if you have not signed up, please uh, sign up 
uh, for the Saturday uh, session in the afternoon as the morning session is full. Uh, please ensure that uh, you include your children if you are bringing them or helpers in that registration too because every person will be counted and there will be no walk-ins for that day. We like to announce that we are nearing the Daring Faith journey and we are very pleased that God has brought many of you along in this study and we are still praying that more of you can come along with us. So visit this website for more details that you can hear not just uh, the details of the uh, campaign itself, but you can actually uh, hear many testimonies that we have been running. And today, we want to hear another one of these stories. 10 years ago, after coming back from my first mission trip, I actually backslided and I stopped going to church for two years. I was surprised to know that I was invited to go for the next one. And although I didn't feel like going, I just asked, so what's the theme for the mission trip? And then they told me that it was God's chosen one. Hearing those three words, I heard God's prompting. I asked him, you want me to go? Although at the part time I didn't understand, I decided to go and I obeyed him. Since then, the mission trip has changed my life and my faith has revealed in God. I have never stopped serving Him and I never turned back from Him again. Thinking back, my life would be a whole lot different if I didn't go back then. No one said life as a Christian was easy. It's going to be tough. Your faith will be challenged. If you're going through a tough season now, you need to pray and talk to God. If you're lost, you need to take this step of faith his head again. Next Sunday, I will be sharing on what happens when you have faith. To prepare ourselves for the campaign, this is a pre-campaign message and I hope you can come along and join us.
Go forth. As we leave this place, remember, nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. No hardship or pandemic, poverty or danger, neither death nor life, angels or demons, our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow, or even the powers of hell itself, nothing in all creation can ever separate us from God's love. Go forth then with joy to love and serve the Lord. The blessings of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Thank you for worshipping together with us as a church of Jesus Christ in Yishun. Join us again next Sunday at YMM Church YouTube. Same time, same network. The peace of the Lord goes with you. Have a blessed week.